My name is Colin Giles, and I'm the head of the School for Animation and Visual Effects here at Vancouver Film School. If you're a current student or alumni, or maybe you're a prospective student, um, or maybe you just saw our invitation on uh, Instagram or one of the thousands of social media channels out there, uh, we're super excited to have you today. Um, definitely uh, excited to, to get back on uh, through all of our, our social media. If you uh, found us through Instagram or TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, or if you want to connect with us in any way, uh, Elena has just put those links in the chat there for you as well. So you can continue to find out when really cool events and really cool people come join us here on our AMA online industry talks. Um, and tonight we have an awesome guest uh, from currently at Image Engine. Uh, everyone, I'd like to welcome uh, look development artist Sonali Dutta. Nice to welcome you here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to speak with you all today. Um, just our our first question came in. Selena's letting us know that the chat box is disabled. Oh no! For attendees, so what you might have to do is change your. Uh, for those of you who are who are joining us, you might have to change who you're typing to uh, to uh, to hosts and panelists from uh, to guests, everyone. Uh, so once you do that, that'll be good. And I'm sure Elena will work on that one. Uh, in the meantime, we've got uh, Q and A there open, which should be work, which is obviously working. So thank you, Selena, um, and we're excited to speak with Sonali today. Uh, we're going to be speaking about her beginnings. We're going to be speaking about her journey uh, in her career thus far, all the way up to working on big Star Wars shows for Disney Plus uh, and in episodes of shows that I'm sure you have enjoyed yourself. I don't think we can probably talk about what you're working on now, but. Um, We'll see where we get to. Uh, and then, yes, absolutely. If you've got questions about uh, Sonali's career or about the industry itself, uh, she's here to answer those questions. So we'll be speaking for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we will get to some Q&A. Um, so welcome, everybody, and welcome, Sonali. I hope you're... Uh, You've uh, you've had a good day at work, and thank you for joining us. I'm sure it's been a busy time for you. Uh, most industry professionals right now are are working pretty hard. It's uh, things are going uh, wild out there right now with the all the different uh, all the different shows that are coming out, uh, Marvel shows, Star Wars shows, and you just happen to be a part of that world too. So yeah, for sure. Uh, we're very honored that you took some time out for us today. I'm so honored to speak here today. It's such an exciting opportunity, and I'm. Um, Glad to get to speak with everybody. Well, it looks like your one of your most recent projects is uh, the Obi Wan Kenobi show that we have most of us, I'm sure, have enjoyed. I certainly did. Um, certainly, as a as a original Star Wars trilogy trilogy person, uh, that show kind of bridged the gap between uh, what a lot of young people experience with Star Wars and going up to to now. Uh, but I think for 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 me, I'd like to start way back in the beginning. Um, of you know your journey to college, you went to Savannah, mm -hmm. uh, College of Art and Design. Uh, our friends down there in a that's a beautiful part of North America. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about your journey to the visual effects industry, animation industry. Uh, talk about you know where was your interest? Were you interested in art? Were you interested in computers? Were you a Star Wars Star Wars nerd? <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been like drawing and painting since I was like. Four years old, my my mom always encouraged me, and my both my parents encouraged me to be really artistic, and they really supported a career in computer graphics. So yeah, I always knew I wanted to do something with art, and I wanted to do something with computers. So being a CG artist just um, was like the perfect path for me. So I always knew I wanted to work in animation, work on like animated films. Um, and uh, Savannah College of Art and Design was like a great place for that. They have a good program. I'm sure just as great as VFS. Um, and so, yeah, at, uh, at SCAD, I originally majored in animation or I started the animation program. Um, and it kind of took me a while to find my way because first I thought I wanted to become like a visual development artist or a character designer. And then I was like, oh, how about 2D animation, or maybe I'll try, um, you know, 3D animation. It just sort of like evolved um, with me trying a lot of different things. So I tried um, lighting and look development, and I found out that that was really my thing. So like in my last year at SCAD, I totally curveball changed my major to visual effects. Um, and I was able to um, get my degree, graduate, um, and I was super lucky to be able to get a job at 
um, Blue Sky Studios. It's the animation studio that worked on movies like Ice Age or Rio, Spies of Disguise, um, which was totally like a dream come true for me. Um, and I started off there as an intern, which was a super exciting opportunity. So, yeah. That's maybe, was there anything that influenced you when you were young? You know, what kind of media did you consume? Did you find yourself at the movie theater all the time? Were you like a television head? Were you into video games? Were you into graphic novels? What were the kind of things when you were younger that led you down this path of entertainment media? Yeah, like 100% all of those things. So I, you know, I read or I watched a lot of movies. So when I was eight years old, my favorite movie was Phantom Menace, Star Wars prequel, episode one. Um, <laughs> so I was a big Star Wars nerd, but I love Disney movies. I had, you know, all the Finding Nemo t-shirts. I had probably almost 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> um, and, you know, played video games. I remember playing like Lego like Star Wars with my brother. So growing up, I was always surrounded by art, media, movies, um, TV shows. So, yeah, I mean, it's one thing to watch all of those things. And then it's another thing to decide, oh, well, that's what I'm going to do for my career. Um, but it was so worth it. But that's yeah, awesome. I'm like a Star Wars fan for life. And I, I understand that a lot of people are like diehard original trilogy people. There are a lot of people who are like, oh, the prequels suck. <laughs> I am a prequel apologist. Those were my favorite movies growing up. I mean, yeah. core memories watching Anakin Skywalker's charred body. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was like my favorite movie. It's still my favorite movie, Revenge of the Sith. So getting to work on something like Obi-Wan Kenobi, it's just a dream come true. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Was there like a seminal moment? Like, uh, so that movie you know was there was there other career paths that you're either being kind of like shepherded to or recommended or anything in your mind that was going that way I mean I know I knew I always loved drawing but at the time I only thought that there was like graphic design I could get into mm -hmm. um, I really wasn't good at math or like anything other than that so it was like art or nothing um, right. for for you was there ever like an argument or any pressure to do anything else yeah I mean I well I really wanted to do animation and I, I wanted to do drawing because I, I've always done drawing. And in my mind, I didn't think I was a very technical person. I was like, you know what? I draw, I like paint pictures. I, I only have so many skills with computer. I can't write code or whatever. Anyway, I, just, I was just like, yeah, I'm not technical. I'm just artistic. So I should stick with like drawing or something that's not very technical because that's not my thing. And when I saw that SCAD had a visual effects program, I was like, that's cool, but I don't think I'm smart enough to do that. Um, <laughs> and I think I was totally wrong. I think, you know, it really like, um, you know, when they talk about like women in STEM, how like women are discouraged from pursuing like STEM careers, technical careers, sure. that might've been like me sort of like disqualifying myself being like, I'm not mm -hmm. technical enough to work in visual effects. I should right. stick to pretty pictures like in animated movies. Right. Um, not that anybody had like, push that upon me but maybe it was something I pushed upon myself that I was like I'm too artistic you know I'll never be able to <laughs> work with nodes or something I don't really know but yeah that makes sense. I mean I, I would assume I was going to be a maybe a, a tougher question to ask which is yeah that pressure uh of being like hey you're not you're not supposed to be in the industry you know I know I know for many many years certainly when I started the industry, the visual effects industry in particular, was very sort of male dominated. Um, and, you know, if you look back on the industrial light and magic years uh, of the beginning of Star Wars and stuff, it was just sort of like that. And I, I uh, one of the things I love about school, of course, is we're seeing this influx of diverse voices and, and, and people from around the world. And of course, the, the sort of gender imbalance that's happened in our industry is, is, is starting to balance more, uh, which is great. And, and do you think that was just a societal thing or is that something that you, you didn't see yourself represented in, in, you know, behind the scenes or whatever it was, was there something else there that you think that was at play? I, you know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, it is true that visual effects is a male dominated industry. Uh, it still is. And I mean, um, it's, it's, it is, it is difficult not seeing other people like you. I think mm -hmm. not seeing a lot of women in my department or even women of color. 
Um, but I think even though you can't see somebody to look up to, or maybe there are a few women that I do look up to, I think imagining myself being like, I don't know, being like, you know, whatever people say, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And I'm going to work as hard as I can to get, you know, where maybe other women haven't been able to get. Um, I always have this ambition that, it, you know, it doesn't matter what are the obstacles. I'm always going to try as hard as I can to get as far as I can. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on, on getting there. And now what's great is you're being a positive influence on, on, on people at our school or students that are seeing you like, Hey, I can make it, you know, like that's, <laughs> it doesn't matter what, how you identify. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what background you are. Um, you know, I, I truly believe, yeah, that, that not only is it, uh, is it great? It's, I think it's an, it's absolutely a necessity that, that our industry will be healthier. The kind of stories that we make will be much, much more rich, mm -hmm. with everybody being involved. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. And now you get to be, you know, that positive influence uh, on other people that um, are looking up to you, which is, which is amazing. Um, so you graduated from SCAD and you got an internship at Blue Sky, rest in peace, Blue Sky. Um, Talk to us a little bit about the experience of being an, an intern. What, what was your daily uh, sort of involvement in that? I think a lot of our students um, are, you know, are very interested in internships at different studios around the world. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's a little bit of like kind of a gray area. But what, what is that? What is that experience like? How, how, what's the pressure like? Was it fun? Was it like summer camp? Was it just like working a regular job? I think I think it was a little bit like summer camp, but also like working a regular job because like first there's like a shock like this is Blue Sky Studios. Um, I watched Ice Age as a kid, you know, I, I grew up with that Ice Age baby. And now all of a sudden you're like in the building where it's made, like you're standing there next to a statue of the squirrel from Ice Age Scrat. And it's like, this is completely surreal. Like, how did I even get here? Um, Internships can be fun, especially if you're at a company that has like an internship program where you're with a lot of other interns. So you're kind of in the same boat as other people who are probably close to your age, close to your experience level, and they're all going through the same thing. They're like, you know, I was in school. Now I'm at this company and this is my first job in the industry. What is going on? Like, um, so I think, I think having other interns there and being able to network with other people um, at your job totally makes a difference. It makes you feel more comfortable because I think for, for people just starting out, it's very nerve wracking. It's like, oh my God, I, I once dreamed of being in this industry and now I'm sitting at this desk surrounded by people who worked on all my favorite movies. Like, oh my gosh, there's definitely like an imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome happens to people of like any level, um, which is sad. I mean, you know, you don't want to say like, oh, will I ever get over my imposter syndrome? You'll mm -hmm. learn to deal with it. <laughs> but I think in internships are such a great opportunity because it's like, you know, you kind of get to figure out like, what is working in the industry really like? But it's not all of the pressures of being a full-time employee who has to pump out some real stuff really fast. You know, they started me off with like, uh, you know, some practice assets. So the movie Spies in Disguise had some characters. I, okay, I'll back up. I was brought on as a character artist intern and I specialized in fur, basically grooming and materials, which was texturing and look dev. Um, so I was working with both the fur and materials departments through my internship. So, you know, I started off with some practice assets, low pressure, just working on like some Houdini grooms because Blue Sky had just switched to Houdini. Um, and that was a really fun opportunity getting to work on like a real production asset, like an asset that was in production, but without the stress of being like, oh my God, this has to be the real thing. This is my okay. first thing, you know? So um, I did that. And then they put me on an asset that was part of the movie called Nimona. So that's like a feature film. At first it was canceled. Now it's back. It's going to be on Netflix. Um, and getting to work on an asset in a movie. Like I watched, I read the graphic novel for Nimona. And then all of a sudden I was like, so excited, like, wow, this is something like really big. This is a story that I really care about getting to work on, you know, characters that are part of that movie was so exciting. Um, even just out of college, I was like 21 years old. I was like, this is amazing. Um, so getting to be an intern is just a really exciting experience. Um, one thing 
I should add is um, I got this internship after I had already graduated from SCAD. Um, but before I had graduated, I was, so SCAD is like a four year program. Um, so in like your third year, going into your third and fourth year, I saw a lot of, a lot, a lot of other like students, a lot of my classmates getting internships. And, you know, I had had interviews, I had portfolio reviews, but I, I didn't have an offer. And I was really concerned, honestly. I was like, I haven't had an internship. Am I ever going to get a job? Like, can I get an internship? There were a lot of companies that only offer internships to people returning to school. Right. And like, before I graduated, I was, I was scared because I was like, I haven't had an internship. I don't know if I'm ready to work in the industry. Like, I don't know if me not having an internship is working against me, but I had, I had a lot of fears when I was a student. And ultimately, I think I was able to overcome them and realize just because I haven't, you know, just because I haven't gotten a job yet doesn't mean I never will. Right. Um, so, yeah, as much as internships are a great opportunity, don't panic if you haven't had one yet. It'll happen. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, I think I think our program is so different too here at VFS because it's just one year. Right. That a lot of students don't feel like they qualify for those internships, but I think it's really nowadays just coming down to the artist and what they what they might bring to the studio, right? So that's mm -hmm. a, what a great what a great way to start your career by by kind of overcoming overcoming that fear. So you go through the the internship. How long was your internship? It was three months. Three months. Um, and then you know at the end I was like. <laughs> Am I going to get a full-time job? I should probably start applying to jobs at other places. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at the last minute, they were like, we'd like to offer you a full-time role as a materials artist. And I was so thrilled I took it. Um, and that was just a really exciting way to end the internship. Absolutely. So tell us what, what was your daily work like as a materials artist? It sounds, that sounds like a very specific role. As a materials artist at Blue Sky? Yes. Yeah, so I think we would we'd start off, um, and this is this is quite similar to how it is now as a look development artist. Um, start off, see what my renders look like, got back from the farm from the previous day, um, and then we would go into what we called rounds there, but a lot of places call them dailies. Um, so maybe dailies with the materials team. My material supervisor would look at the work that I made, and they would give notes like. Does this look like the concept? Does this look like what we're going for? Um, go back to my desk and, well, when we were in the office, um, <laughs> start addressing those notes. Um, I would have like leads and other mentors who were there to give me feedback when I was starting out. Um, we would have some like department meetings. So we would talk about like, we had just sort of overhauled the pipeline at Blue Sky. So we would talk about like, new technology advances and like struggles that we were having working with the new pipeline. Um, and yeah, we did have a lot of those like meetings where we just got together, connected with the other artists and talked to each other. It was, it was a lot easier when you're in person because yeah. you're like, you're like in this row of cubicles and you just walk over to your lead and you're like, Hey, um, of course that all changes uh, when we got into the pandemic, yeah. but um, you know, just keep working on some of the notes that I got and some, uh, things that I wanted to do to make my work better. Then I sent off the render to the farm and, uh, go home and see what awaits me the next day. <laughs> and do it all over again. Of course. That's fantastic. So my assumption here is that you got caught up, unfortunately, in the, the change at Blue Sky. Is that, is that correct? You were, you were laid off with everybody else? Yeah. So I had worked at Blue Sky for two years. And, you know, we had sort of uh, withstood like a year of the pandemic. And so mm -hmm. we were like, oh, yeah, you know, we're in it for the long haul. We were working on Nibona. We were working on a um, series of shorts that are now released called Scrat Tales. Mm -hmm. um, and one day we get this news that, uh, <laughs> you know, Disney had acquired Blue Sky they had acquired Fox and then with that came Blue Sky and Disney. Of course they have Walt Disney animation studios. They have Pixar. They were like, do we really need Blue Sky? The world was like, yeah, we do. <laughs> but Disney was like, no, we don't. So unfortunately there were, you know, there were 450 employees and I was one of them to get let go. Um, which was, you know, shocking to me. 
I was like, oh my gosh, this is my first job in the industry. And I'm only two years in and now I don't have a job. And in the middle of the pandemic, it's like, it totally takes you by surprise. Like what is going on? And it's, it's like a, almost like a historic event in the industry that it's like, you know, this studio has been open for 25 years and now it's gone. Um, And like, as like an artist earlier in my career, I didn't have anything for my portfolio that I'd worked on at Blue Sky. I had just, you know, I was working on projects that were unreleased. (laughs) So I was like, oh, I have to, I have to apply for jobs. I have to put together a new reel, but it's, (laughs) it's a lot of my student work. Like, you know, what do I have to show for the time that I've been here? Um, So I think that's kind of scary. And I hope that nobody else has to go through that, but I mean, that's showbiz baby. Like it happens for sure. Um, but you know, I was able to bounce back. Um, what was really exciting is I had a coworker who, you know, worked with me at Blue Sky, but before that he had worked at Image Engine. Um, and I think he was able to recommend me for this job at Image Engine, which was such a fantastic opportunity. And I was so thrilled, um, to come to Image Engine because it was like, you know, cool projects, a really fun portfolio. And um, I was, it was like a dream come true to work at Image Engine. So even though, you know, there were layoffs, it really sucked. Mm-hmm. Um, what came out of that, getting to work at Image Engine, getting to move to Vancouver was just so amazing. So it was a blessing quite, and a quite curse. The silver, yeah, quite the silver lining to what yeah. could have been a very frustrating story. Well, one of the one of the things that I saw certainly as you know, having been in this this industry for twenty five years and seeing the ups and downs and the changes and the growth and the you know the things that shift around in our industry, um, when that happened, the the amount of outreach that I saw from other artists and other studios um, was was amazing, and and I just think that goes to show how much of a of a family we are. Um, sometimes there's things, yeah, that we can't control. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. there's the business side of things. Um, but yeah, to to have a soft landing in Vancouver at Image Engine, I mean, what a place to uh, to continue on. And as a as a Star Wars nerd that you've admitted, <laughs> um, talk about yeah, talk about arriving in in Vancouver in a new city in a new studio during a global pandemic. I mean. You in a new country in a new country and then you get to work on star wars uh and, and different exciting shows talk about that transition which must have been you know quite a learning experience in your life let alone your career yeah for sure i mean okay i'll i'll say um i was working at blue sky when i watched the first two seasons of the mandalorian and um i don't know it was it was like the first time that i've really seen like a tv show that was so high production but on top of that, like the Mandalorian to me is such a visually stunning show. It's like, it's got all these cool environments. It's just like fun to watch. Every frame is so exciting. Um, and I was watching the Mandalorian season two finale and you get to the scene <laughs> with the reveal with Luke Skywalker. And I was like, oh my God, that is incredible. Um, and that was actually, that was the moment when I was watching that that I was like, you know what? I want to make something like that. I want to work on The Mandalorian. Um, And that totally, like, I had always wanted to work in animation. And then after I saw The Mandalorian, I was like, you know what? (laughs) That's my new dream. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, it's crazy because, like, I was like, you know, how am I ever going to get there? Because, you know, animation, it's hard enough to get into. Visual effects, the work is very challenging. It's very photorealistic. And it's very complicated. Um, so I was kind of like, well, you know, how am I going to get to that level? Like, I'm going to have to keep working, keep improving my portfolio, have to start making realistic work. Um, and, you know, of course, like two months later, you hear the news about Blue Sky. So, but, but when, when I think about it, it was like, oh, you know, I watched The Mandalorian and then like six months later, I was working on Book of Boba Fett, which was like, uh, crazy journey I would say but I mean like okay back to the original question um and transitioning from okay so U.S. and Canada aren't that different but moving during a pandemic was just (laughs) yeah it was just a hassle so you've got all the quarantine and stuff but I mean I moved to a totally new city you know I've never been to Vancouver I never lived outside the U.S. 
And I didn't, I knew some people in Vancouver, but not a lot. And with the pandemic, it is kind of difficult to make friends in a new city Mm -hmm. because it's like, everybody's inside. Everybody's wearing a mask. Nobody wants COVID. Can I blame them? (laughs) But um, one of the things that really helped me is reaching out to um, other people who I work with at Image Engine. Um, So a lot of my coworkers, super friendly, super great to, um, super happy to meet new people. And they were really warm and welcoming, which was fantastic and really helped me with my transition uh, coming to a new, coming to a new country, (laughs) coming to a new city at Image Engine. And I think, I think as scary as it is um, moving to a new place, I think the excitement of a new opportunity, you know, moving to a new place, getting to work on my dream project, it totally helps with, you know, any nerves or anxiety, just the excitement of something new. Absolutely. Well, and now hopefully with the pandemic sort of, you know, changing or evolving so what we can start to, to meet people again or travel or you can go back home and visit your family, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And now you can start to actually work with the people at Image Engine and it's like it's like meeting new friends all over again. That's that's an exciting prospect. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the industry right now is in this like crazy busy time. So I think every studio has sort of been hiring like crazy. Uh, Image Engine included. So the company has grown a lot. And with that comes uh, new people to meet, new people to collaborate with, and new opportunities to make friends. Um, If I had to give one piece of advice to any junior starting out is make connections, like meet people who you're working with, um, hang out with them, you know, get coffee, get drinks, just get to know people. Um, And the more that you get to know the people you're working with, you know, the more confident you'll feel in a new place. Oh, that's great. That's absolutely, that's, yeah, for my history of my career so far, it, I, sometimes I forget some of the things I've worked on, but it's the people that you mm-hmm. don't get, right? Those are, that's, that's really what makes, makes the the joy and the, the, you know, the stresses of working in this job that makes it, that makes it so, uh, you know, so much more authentic and and memorable uh, and meaningful in, in that sense. Yeah, um, sure. Well, since you've been talking, we've got we've got quite a few people that have joined us. Uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that next to the chat is a Q and A button. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, we're gonna get we're getting close to some Q and A time here with Sonali. So if you have any uh, you know burning questions that you want to send her way, uh, put them in the Q and A there, and and we'll certainly get uh, get them right to Sonali direct here. Um, what here's here's just a kind of a loose fun question. What's your favorite thing about Vancouver so far? my favorite thing about Vancouver uh definitely not the rain (laughs) um but I will say I don't mind that it it usually doesn't get too hot Mm -hmm. but I think I live in downtown Vancouver in Yaletown and honestly it's the the most fun place I've ever lived what I love about Vancouver okay maybe I'm about to list a bunch of things it's like a walkable city or like taking transit I think that's one thing that I love about Vancouver. You know, in a lot of North America, you need a car to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you don't want to drive, you don't want to sit in traffic, kind of limits your options. But something that I love about Vancouver is that everything, like at least in downtown, everything is nearby. But even if you can't walk there, you can take the train, you can take the bus. Um, It's really convenient to just like get out and do stuff. Go meet with your friends. Um, go try new coffee shops and restaurants. Um, I think being able to live in a city where you can walk makes a huge difference to your quality of life. So yeah, that's one of my favorite things about Vancouver. <laughs> that's yeah, me too. It's such a it's such a you know community-minded place in the sense that we're all connected because we can just kind of travel on foot <laughs> or, or bike or you know, it's just such a such an outdoor type of place where, you know, certainly during the pandemic it wasn't, but now that we're kind of easing out of that, it's we're able yeah. to again. Uh, awesome. Well, we definitely have some questions starting to come in here for you, Sonali. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the first one is from Ember. Uh, thanks, Ember, for your question. Uh, they're asking, what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Um, uh, well, okay. So something that I know now, which I wish I knew in college, uh, is that I would get a job. <laughs> Because when I was a student, you know, we would actually have talks like this where there would be like an industry person, they would come, 
they would show us, you know, all of their cool Houdini techniques. And it was like, oh my God, that's so awesome. You work on, you know, whatever cool Marvel shows and um, that's great for you, but I don't see how I will ever be able to achieve that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, one thing is like the imposter syndrome. Another thing is like just not believing in yourself. Um, so yeah, when I was a student, I, I really didn't know if I would be able to achieve my dreams or I thought it would take like 20 years to be able to get to a place where I can work on my dream projects. I was like, I'm going to have to start out at some small studio that works on no name, you know, projects. Um, so I think, I think if there was one thing I wish I knew was that I will get a job. (laughs) I will be able to (laughs) work on things that I want to work on. Because I think, I think you get out of it what you put into it. Like the harder you work, the more it'll pay off. And I worked really hard um, and it did pay off. So I think if I, if I gave some advice to people, it would be like, actually believe in yourself. Because yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's easy to look at a person in the industry and be like, how will I ever be that successful? But sure. I was there too once. And I can say now that uh, you will get there take that pressure off. It'll just happen. You just got to focus on the work, right? Exactly. Awesome. Well, that's great advice to yourself and to others. (laughs) Our next question is from Ainsley. Thank you, Ainsley, for hanging out with us this evening. Uh, She says, hi, Sonali. Wondering if you can talk about your mentorship work a bit. Um, I know you've been doing some mentoring, uh, you know, through your job, and, and that's just sort of a natural part of, you know, an organic part of working. But it's a great question, Ainsley. Uh, yeah, so now talk a little bit about your, your mentorship. Yeah, so recently I worked with women in animation. Um, and so they have essentially a mentorship program, which they call their mentor circles. So it's uh, one mentor, an industry professional um, in like animation, VFX or games, and then six to 10 mentees. Um, and it's a four month program. So mine, um, mine started in the spring of this year. And I had six amazing mentees, uh, Anna, Mimi, Vivian, Nicole, Sarah, and Shannon. Uh, (laughs) And they all specialized in disciplines such as modeling, texturing, look dev, and lighting. And the circle's focus was about landing your first job as a 3D artist. So all of them, they hadn't worked their first like real job in the industry. They were Mm -hmm. students. They were people looking to make a career change. They were recent grads. All of them had a common goal of landing your first job as a 3D artist. Um, so we talked about a variety of topics. We talked about like how to improve your resumes, cover letters. We did workshops for those, improving your reel and your like social media LinkedIn presence. Uh, we also talked about things like interviews and salary negotiations. The goal was to talk about the things you wish you learned in art school. Um, <laughs> And it was just an incredible experience to watch these ladies grow from, you know, like when you're starting out, you don't have a lot of confidence. Um, And my goal with the mentorship is to give them the tools and the confidence that they need to succeed. Um, And one thing that was just really exciting is by the end of the mentorship, the majority of them had jobs um, at studios like DNAG and DreamWorks. And that was just like so amazing to see like their hard work just pay off and tell them like what I just said, like, I didn't think I'd be able to make it, but now I'm here. And, you know, that's the same thing for them. They were like, I'm never going to get a job. And then by the end of it, they had a job and I'm like, I told you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's just like such a fantastic experience and um, you get to meet a lot of people too. So I had guest speakers brought in from companies like Pixar, ILM, Weta, Technical Art, like, getting to meet those people through the mentorship program, I think as a mentee, that would be really valuable. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm going to be running another mentor circle in spring of 2023. So if you become a women in animation member or a member of their partner organization, you'll be able to join a mentor circle or you'll be able to apply for one and then join one. So I, if you're like a woman or underrepresented gender minority, you're looking to break in or you're looking to learn something new, I highly recommend checking out Leah's mentor circles. It's such a fantastic, like almost career changing program. Um, and yeah, I can't recommend mentorship enough for 
students and people trying to break into the industry. That sounds super exciting. So yeah, definitely everyone uh, who's joining us today, check out Women in Animation or WIA as they go by. Um, they just do some amazing events uh, as well, not mm-hmm. just here in Vancouver, but across the industry. Um, it's such a great, great foundation. They've been doing some amazing stuff and, and they connect not just at professional level, but of course through student level as well. Um, so yeah, what what an awesome what an awesome thing to give uh, all the information, you know, that, that you're gaining in your career and stuff that has been passed down to you, you get to pass down to them. It's like Jedi. Mm-hmm. To one. Um, <laughs> and it, it totally makes sense. So that's, that's exciting. Um, and maybe sure. connect to that. We have, we have a question here, which is a little bit more specific and, and certainly you don't have to answer this uh, specifically, but uh, it's coming from anonymous. Um, mm-hmm. And they're asking about, they're asking about salary. Um, and how maybe salaries have changed um, and how affordable, you know, this industry might be. I mean, I know we're living in Vancouver, which is one of the most expensive cities in the world, of course. Um, mm-hmm. We all have to make changes and with the way the economy is going right now. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about that and, and sort of expectations for for students coming out of school. Like how, what, you know, what kind of leverage do they have in terms of salary expectation or or salary negotiation? As you said, you were mentoring some 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 people on. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about that work life cycle. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say that you have more leverage than you think. Um, I think it's difficult when you're starting out because you're kind of like you're thrilled to even get a job offer, but to some extent, companies expect you to negotiate for your salary. Um, so I, I would say um, internship like rates are kind of similar across the board. So when I was an intern, I was paid 15 US dollars an hour, which is probably close to 20 Canadian dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, but from there, I've luckily gone up. But a lot of it depends on the city that you're working in. So um, from, from what I've heard, Vancouver, Vancouver is obviously an expensive city. But it's also uh, one of the cities in the world that pays the most. I mean, if you go to a city like London, London is really expensive to live in. But I don't know that you're getting paid enough to live in London. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess that's one thing to consider. I think maybe LA and Vancouver are pretty similar um, in terms of salary. But yeah, I mean, as far as like um, living in a city like Vancouver, I think what you really have to keep in mind is that your skills have value and never undersell yourself. So it's hard when you're starting out because you're like, "Mm, I'm lucky to even get a job. But if, if you don't ask, you won't get that opportunity. You know, like if you don't ask for more, you won't know if you could have had more. Um, So I think taking advantage of an opportunity to just ask, you don't want to leave money on the table. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's and I think that's the 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 most important theme there is like you're you're worth more than you might think. You know, it's yeah. very easy to just sort of like feel like you don't have power, but you do have you've got superpowers, you've got <laughs> skills, you've got story skills, artistic skills, technical skills, and um and certainly as you put it earlier, the 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 industry is is very in need of talent right now. So you're mm-hmm. we're kind of in the driver's seat as artists, which is which is which is great. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, it's a great, great company and and, and great answer. Um we have a question actually in the chat here uh, from WebKey. I hope I said that right. Uh, what are the main differences in animation versus visual effects? So maybe your time at Blue Sky versus your time at uh, at an image engine. Is there any disadvantages or advantages? Um, one one thing to me that was a challenge is I think the quality of work that we produce in visual effects is higher, like in terms of realism. So, I mean, we're, we're striving to make work that's more realistic, more beautiful, like matches the reference closer. Um, Whereas in animation, it's very artistic. It can be very stylized. So um, the project that I worked on at Blue Sky was Nimona. If you've ever seen that, like Netflix promotional image for Nimona, it's super stylized, which is so cool to look at. It's very like, If you ever watch Spider-Verse and you're like, that's what I want to work on, um, the kind of stuff we were doing in animation is very much like that. Um, So as much as that is exciting, at some point I realized it wasn't challenging enough. I was like, you know, I want to push my skills further. I want to be able to make work that's 
better, more realistic, um, and just, yeah, push my skills, challenge myself. And so I think at some point when I was working in animation, it felt like I was under challenged. And now coming to visual effects, I don't feel under challenged. It's, it's challenging for sure, because you're always trying to make something better. You're trying to make it look more realistic. And so if I had to give another one piece of advice is to match the reference. <laughs> so in your demo reel, like find, well, for your demo reel, find a photo, find something that you want to match to, and then match it exactly. As my lead always says, like I ask him like, oh, how is this? He's like, does it look like the reference? And I'm like, no. And he's like, then you're not done. So <laughs> I think that's one key difference between animation and visual effects. Um, otherwise, I think it depends on the company. So like feature animation studios like Blue Sky, uh, we worked on something for a really long time. Um, like it was a slower pace, um, but visual effects, it's all about like speed, getting stuff done fast. But at Image Engine specifically, it's not only about speed, but it's also about quality. So one of the things that I love about Image Engine is that our work is to a really high quality. We're not just trying to push stuff out as fast and as cheap as possible. It needs to be really good. And of course, that's one of the things I love about Image Engine is because it's like challenging. It's, we're not just making it good enough. We're trying to make it like great. Um, so I think those are some of the key differences in my experience between animation and VFX. And it's one of the reasons why I love VFX because I get to really push myself. I think, yeah, I think that's a, it, it's a thing that's not talked about a lot is that there is quite a, quite a bit of difference between the two, you know, between the two parts of our industry, which, mm -hmm. you know, on the surface might seem like they're the same, but they really are quite different paths and uh, they take a little bit of different focus. Mm -hmm. Uh, another couple well, these, there's a couple of questions here that are very similar. So I'm going to, I'm going to connect them together. This is from anonymous and from Ember. Um, do you have any tips for networking or how to, how to reach out? And are you an introvert or an extrovert? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I used to be an introvert. Um, I, I also had a lot of social anxiety. So I was like afraid to talk to people. I was kind of afraid to reach out. It's also really scary reaching out to like, industry people, because if you like put them on a pedestal, you don't realize that they're also people. Um, and so I think, I think I had a lot of social anxiety that I needed to get over. Mm -hmm. um, now I would, I would consider myself neither an introvert nor an extrovert. I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, but I think, I think one tip that I would give for networking is like, understand that the person on the other side of that LinkedIn message or somebody who you're talking to at like a networking event, they are also a person. And like, they are probably more worried about themselves than they are about you. Cause like, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, are people judging me? Are they, you know, picking me apart in their heads? I think, I think a lot of that fear is like in our heads. Mm -hmm. um, another, piece of advice is, is the more you do something, the better you get at it. So the more that you go up, you talk to people, you like try to put that fear away. Like, I don't care what they think of me. I'm just going to say hi and ask how their day is going or ask them some question. Just like even on LinkedIn, you like type the question, throw your phone away, <laughs> just like do your best to get over that fear. Um, and that will sort of open up more opportunities. It'll help you get better at networking, just doing it more. So, yeah. Yeah. And just not, not, well, there's a, there's a fear sometimes of like, there's a wall, they're not going to reply to me, but I think, yeah. you know, especially through um, recruiters or people in talent acquisition, I mean, it's kind of their job to connect with you. So it can be a really nice, simple way to connect with people is just, is just making that connection and asking questions, even if it's through Instagram or social media. Um, yeah. It's, and it, it, it's what our industry is about, right? Is, is, is meeting people and networking. Exactly. And I think networking is totally key to like, it's all about who, you know, well, it is about your skills, but it's also about who, you know, um, but yeah, getting over that fear is difficult for sure. Especially if you have anxiety or you're very nervous or you're introverted. Um, but yeah. Well, I, I mean, you had a great example earlier of your studio, 
shuts down and a friend recommends you to image engine and there's that connection right the sometimes exactly. you don't even know that you're making those relationships and how they're going to the pay off down the road so that mm -hmm. that professional development that you've got uh is already paying off which is which is amazing yeah just as important as networking up like networking with people who are sort of above your level is networking with the people who are at your level so other students other people who are seeking jobs and other people who are recent grads, just like um, connecting with people like your friends. So one example is I had a friend of mine in university and, you know, they were looking to make a move uh, to Vancouver and I was able to recommend them for a job at Image Engine. And now they're working here. They get to work on some really cool stuff. I got to train them, which was really exciting. Um, Shout out to Sharon. I know you're watching. So <laughs> I think um, networking with those people um, who are on your level, people at your school, I think that's just as important. Oh, uh, yeah, they're waving in the chat. Just <laughs> as important as uh, networking up. That's great advice. Absolutely. Yeah, that that is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are always, always looking out here, but the people that you're working with right now are going to be your closest uh, allies and the people that are going to, you know, you can pay it forward and pay it back to each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a question here about about what has been the highlight of your career so far. I'm not sure what you're allowed to talk about in terms of what you're working on now. And obviously, uh, we we don't want to spoil anything. But uh, mm -hmm. what what has been the highlight so far in terms of the projects that you've worked on? Star Wars. You know, I mean, <laughs> everybody looks at Star Wars as like, you know, the original trilogy was like a pioneer in visual effects. But I mean, growing up, it was one of my favorite franchises. Um, and so getting to, I mean, what I brought up about the Mandalorian season two, getting to watch that and then six months later being a part of that, it's just incredible. Um, I am working on the Mandalorian season three, which is so exciting to me. I mean, totally one of my dream projects. Um, oh, okay. So one, one example I'll bring up from Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, there is, there is one shot where we have Darth Vader and his helmet. Uh, his helmet had a lot of reflections from lights <laughs> and cameras and stuff. So we replaced his CG helmet. We replaced his helmet with a CG helmet. And I did that look dev because I was like, I want to work on Darth Vader. <laughs> and now I can be like, hey, everybody, I worked on Darth Vader. Like total bragging rights, getting to work on Star Wars. So. That's awesome. You got to help fix Darth Vader. I fixed him. I replaced him. <laughs> That's great. And you probably got to go back to your, you know, one of your favorite movies to look for reference to be able to, you know, bring it back to the way it's, we all expect Darth Vader to look like. So exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. I mean, I worked on an, uh, a character on Book of Boba Fett. Uh, he's, he's just a guy who like pulls a rickshaw. But the funny thing is that he, he appeared in Attack of the Clones so I'm like looking at these videos from Attack of the Clones, but it, but it's like kind of, it's kind of funny because it's like, oh yeah, I remember the scene, you know, when I was watching it as a kid. And then another exciting thing is getting to see how far CG has progressed since that mm -hmm. time. Obviously there was probably almost two, sorry, not 200, 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and in technology years, it's 200 years ago. Yeah, right? exactly. Like in VFX terms, it's <laughs> centuries. Um, and things have definitely progressed since then, but it's still part of this iconic franchise that everybody loves. Um, oh, also, like, there's a Lego Star Wars. Like, if you look at the Lego Instagram, there's, like, uh, something they posted, which was, like, my environment from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. And I was like, that's my environment. Now it's made of Legos. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ultimate, the ultimate compliment. Exactly. Yeah. You can retire now. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, I can die. Thanks Thank a lot, so Legos. <laughs> Um, so we've got time for for, for two more questions, uh, and I'm going to link my last question into into one of them. But first, Amber has a very classic question for you, straight down the straight down the middle of Main Street here. Do you have any advice for somebody looking to get into look development? I uh, yeah, for sure. Thanks, Amber, for all of your fantastic questions. Um, I think my advice would be match references. <laughs> so always, you know, study the world around you. When you're like walking down the rainy Vancouver streets, look at the puddles, look at how bumpy the road is. Just study everything around you because that's what you're going to be trying to recreate. And the more realistic that your work is, 
the better it is. And the more that you strive to push yourself to make more realistic work, like the more you'll be able to succeed and the better work you'll produce. Um, so I think for, for look development specifically, I think matching references is totally essential. Um, other tips probably like just keep going, like keep improving your reel, um, keep trying to get feedback from people. Like, again, going back to networking, it's hard. It's, it takes, takes a lot of courage to reach out to somebody and say, Hey, I was wondering if I could get some feedback on my reel. Um, but the feedback that you can get from that is totally invaluable. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's something else I would recommend. And another thing is just like, keep applying. So maybe you apply to a job once and then you got rejected and maybe you're like discouraged. You're like, Oh, this is my dream job. I didn't get it. I like me. I was like, Oh, maybe I'll never get a job. Um, but just keep trying. Cause you never know, you know, the company's needs might change. Uh, you will probably just keep on improving and then, you know, make new pieces, put it on your reel and see how it goes again. So just keep trying. Don't give up. Nice. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate that energy for sure, right? Especially when in those times where it might be difficult or your studio shuts down or you're in the middle <laughs> of a pandemic, uh, just having that passion for for what you're doing is is is, is priceless and and certainly a, a major part of having a long career. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's make this our our last question then is is let's focus it on the future of Sonali. What where do you want to go? Where's do you have any big dreams? Do you have secret projects in mind? Do you have personal projects? Do you you know, are you gonna are you gonna direct season four of Mandalorian? Like where where do you see yourself going from here? Yeah, I don't see myself coming for John Favreau's job, but <laughs> maybe it'll happen. I'm not ruling it out. I mean, I just want to keep working on the kind of stuff that I am working on. I would love to just keep pushing my work. I mean, for me, I I really want to move up. I would love to be a lead one day, and I I want to keep like trying to bring people up, like keep mentoring, keep like trying to train people, um, helping other people grow because, you know, I had a lot of help along the way from other people. And um, one of the things that I really want to do is give back, you know, with the mentorship, help other people achieve their dreams. I think that is um, one goal that I have. So yeah, I don't know. Just keep going and just keep, have an open book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep pushing out star Wars stuff. There you go. Well, that was the, what's amazing. And I tell this to students a lot is like you, I, I bet you in year two of SCAD, you couldn't have believed that you'd be working on season three of the Mandalorian in Vancouver, Canada. So not even in year four of SCAD. Right. <laughs> not even in year two of blue sky. Um, oh, not even then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, Sonali, uh, congratulations on your journey so far. Uh, Thank certainly you so you're, much. You're on your way to some big stuff and you're working on big stuff and you're you're making a difference in the industry. And, and certainly by coming and joining us today, you've you've uh, really given us some great insight. And I can tell by the, but there's a lot of love in the chat for you there. Oh. So <laughs> definitely <laughs> appreciate nice. uh, your insight. Um, and, and certainly, uh, you know, your, your journey is, is a specific one. And we love getting all the, all the information and background into that and your passion uh, for, for your work um, is coming through in Zoom. So we appreciate oh. all of you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been really great to answer all of your questions and hear from the students and everybody. So this has been really awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh, appreciate it. And thank you so much for your time. I know it's uh, it's a busy, busy job you've got. Um, so we really appreciate and, and are honored that you chose uh, to spend some time with us today. So uh, thank you for everything and the best of luck. Uh, we can't wait to see Mandalorian season three uh, and to see more <laughs> of your work out there. Um, and to everyone who joined us this evening, thank you so much. I, I know you learned a lot uh, and, and we certainly got a lot of great information from you, Sonali. So we, we're highly appreciative of it. Um, be well, everybody. Thank you again, Sonali. Thank you to Image Engine for helping set this up. Thank you to Elena for doing all the background work here and, and recording this. This will be on our YouTube channel uh, coming up in a couple of days. So if you missed it, you're not here, it'll be there. Uh, and if you want to share it with anyone, because there's a lot of amazing information, look for it there uh, on the Vancouver Film School YouTube channel. Sonali, appreciate it. Have a great evening. Best Thank of you. luck. Uh, we hope to, 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 to cross paths again in the future.
All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for coming and listening in. All right. Awesome. Bye, thank everybody. You.